I'm Cassie, and I'm a master's student over at the University of Washington. This is my partner and chef. Uh, Hello. Along for the ride. <laughs> and um, as part of my global health capstone for my master's degree, um, I am looking at climate change in Peru, uh, particularly in the Cusco region, but also nationwide. Uh, originally focused on uh, services for immigrants, um, climate refugees who are moving to the urban areas, um, but unfortunately I haven't been able to find too much information about that, so uh, I'm looking more broadly at policy implications for climate change. Um, as well as service provision, service needs, and um, just how climate change is perceived in Peru. Cool. Dice que es de la Universidad de Washington en los Estados Unidos y es un estudiante de está estudiando para su maestría en cambio climático y esa es su compañera se llama Jeff y él está viajando con ella y está estudiando específicamente los efectos de cambio climático aquí en Perú y aún más específicamente aquí en la región de los Andes pues y los efectos en comunidades indígenas y también como en los servicios y ella quisiera estudiar los efectos en, para los inmigrantes pero ahora está como expandiendo eh, Bueno, sus estudios van a expandar un poco para que pueda como estudiar los efectos de en un plano un sí, un plano más largo. Ya. Yeah. Um, so when I originally wrote Kennedy, I was asking uh, about what sorts of services were in this area for uh, immigrants who are moving because of uh, the impacts of climate change. Um, and she asked me to do a short presentation on what I've learned so far. Uh, I imagine just from some of the feedback that I've gotten that probably a lot of what I have to say will be review for some of you, most of you. Um, so really I'm here to hopefully learn from you afterwards about um, how climate change is, is affecting the people in this region and um, how we talk about it, how we should talk about it, and most importantly what I can take back to the U.S. Um, to hopefully help improve my program at, at the University of Washington. Cool. Um. Pues dice que cuando habló con Kennedy, Kennedy pidió, Kennedy pidió que ella hace una presentación de que ha, eh, ha aprendido ya, pero dice que la mayoría de la presentación va a ser como un repaso para la, la mayoría de nosotros. Pues um, ella quiere aprender de nosotros también al fin de la presentación para que ella pueda llevar una información a los estados para mejorar su programa de maestría. Alright, next slide. Thanks. So I'm just going to start off by giving you some of the basic numbers that I've learned. Pretty much everything that I'm reporting to you I've learned from the World Bank, from the IPCC, from uh, university research studies. So a lot of it is it's just out there and available information, but hopefully I've been able to condense a lot of it uh, to some easily digestible uh, info for you. Um, so the things that we appreciate about Peru, the things we love about Peru and that make it beautiful are also what makes it fragile, which are its um, vast ecosystems. It has 28 of the 34 different climates represented within the borders of this country. Um, which makes it not only ecolo ecologically diverse, but also very fragile. Um, it's now listed as the third most vulnerable country in the world to climate change after Honduras and Bangladesh. Dice, dice que los países más vulnerables en el mundo son Honduras y Black Bangladesh, y Perú es el ter tercero. Y también dice que, eh, bueno, las cosas que queremos mucho de Perú, como los ecosistemas y todo, eh, son las cosas que, ha que hacen que sea 
el tercer humano vulnerable en el So, in the past 25 years, the temperature in the Andes has increased by 70% more than it has in the rest of the world. Um, and those temperatures are increasing at a more rapid pace the higher in elevation that you go. <laughs> uh, it's dramatic. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm throwing out a lot of numbers here. Do you want me to pause a little more frequently for you? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm going to write some of those down. <laughs> okay. So, sorry, can you repeat that about the 70%? Uh -huh. So, in the past 25 years, the temperature in the Andes has increased by 70% more than the global average. Um, and those temperatures are increase, increasing more rapidly the higher in elevation that you go, which is particularly important to our water resources in this country. So it's 70% faster increasing temperature than the global average. En los, los 25 años pasados, eh, la temperatura está incrementando, you said 70%? Mm -hmm. Sí, 70% más rápido que lo demás del mundo. Mm -hmm. Y también dice que está incrementando aún más rápido en los, las elevaciones más, más altas. Pues eh, tiene efecto muy grave en los fondos de los recursos de agua. Para mm -hmm. um, so an average increase of six degrees is predicted by the end of the century. Um, that's an average across Peru. Like I said, that average is actually going to be higher up in the Andes. Um, we're also expecting a change in precipitation. Um, parts of the country are going to be expecting a 20% increase in precipitation by the end of the century. Other parts are actually expecting a 20% decrease in precipitation. Uh, I believe the Sacred Valley is expecting the latter, the 20% decrease in precipitation. Um, and then, just to top things off, the Peruvian uh, Amazon just became a net emitter of carbon dioxide as opposed to oxygen uh, in 2012. Cool. Uh, los cientistas piensan que en Perú la temperatura va a incrementar al menos 6 grados. How many years? Um, Antes del 2100. Yeah, by the end of the century. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Y aún más en las montañas, como, como acá. Y en algunas regiones va a ser más precipitación, mm -hmm. y, pero en otras va a ser menos, como en la, la, la Valle Sagrado. Va a ser como 20% menos en el futuro. Mm -hmm. Pues es muy grave para nosotros. Y también en la, la Amazona, in Peru, uh, está emitiendo más, what do you say, more carbon dioxide? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's emitting carbon dioxide yeah. as opposed to oxygen. And that emitter, so, so yeah. the jungles at all times emitting and absorbing, it's in, typically the Amazon's been in carbon sink. So yeah, I don't know how to say carbon dioxide. <laughs> oh. uh, sí, normalmente la, la Amazon emite más o oxígeno, pero ahora están emitiendo más de eh, carbón de uh, uh, hidrocarbón. Sí. Mm -hmm. So, 95% of tropical glaciers are found in the Andes, and about three quarters of those tropical glaciers are found in Peru. Um, so, 95% of Oh, did you have a question? No, just yeah. translating glaciers for him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so 95% 95, 95 of Peru's population gets their water resources from the tropical glaciers in the Andes. Um, that means their drinking water, their agricultural water, hydroelectricity, um, and Peru has already lost 39% of its tropical glaciers uh, since 1939. And most of these are statistics from 2006. 
so probably lost a little more since since then. So to put it, I'll let you translate because I'm going to throw out more numbers. Cool. Most of them she can see on the screen in the uh, yeah. You okay. Translated it. The okay. Awesome. Spanish versus good. And it it looks okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Puede leer la la pantalla. Sí. Okay. So, to put it regionally, between 1980 and 2006, glacier retreat in the Cordillera, Cordillera Blanca was 33%. I'm probably going to mess up a lot of these words, so please uh, correct me as I go. Uh, between 1988 and 2006, glacier loss for Corapuna, the Corapuna glacier was 50%. And in the Salcante snow cap, approximately 28% of the glacier cover was lost in just four years. And that was um, 2006, 2006, 2007. So. Cool. Sorry, uh, can you repeat some of those numbers for me? Yeah. Uh, so between 1980 and 2006, glacier retreat in Cordillera Blanca was 33%. Between 1988 and 2006, glacier loss for Corapuna was 50%. And the Salcante snow cap uh, lost 28% of its gla glacier uh, cover in, in just four years, between 2003 and 2007. What was the Corablanca one? Yeah. Uh, Cordillera Blanca, 33%. Eh, Cordillera Blanca perdió um, 30, 33% de la glaciera. Mm -hmm. eh, entre 88 y 2006, el Corapuna perdió 50%. Eh, entre 2003 y 2007, Salcante perdió 20%. Um, and then the Kel Kelkaya, is that how you say it? Kelkaya ice cap? Kelkaya. Sure. sure. Uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the largest glacier in the Peruvian Andes, um, 17 square miles, and it's where the majority of uh, the water for uh, a large part of the Peruvian population, it's where a large part of the Peruvian population gets its water. Um, it's shrunk by 30% in the past 33 years. Three years? Uh, 33 years. So 1% per year, basically. Dice que Kelkaya es la más grande glaciar en, bueno, en, eh, en Perú y la mayoría de agua para mucha de la población viene de esa, esa glaciar. Pues eh, también dice que ha, ha perdido como 30% en los últimos 33 años. Um, so basically what we're looking at is the glaciers are receding about 65 feet per year. Um, and most of the glaciers below 18,000 feet will be gone uh, by next year. La mayoría está perdiendo como 20, 25 metros de cada año. So, uh, as I said, this obviously is going to have a lot of effects on water supply in Peru. Um, and I first want to talk about agriculture, since a lot of people in Peru are agriculturalists. So, um, obviously we can already see the effects of climate change in Peru. Uh, we can tell that... the Sorry, I'm saying hi to your rat. Oh. <laughs> that the, the dry and the rainy seasons have been changing. Um, so I'm going to put some, some hard numbers to that. Uh, so the rainy season has lengthened and intensified already. By the 2040s, precipitation is going to increase 3 to 6.5%. Um, the rain's going to be a lot intenser with hail, a lot colder, um, and a lot longer. So uh, we're looking at intense rain starting in November and ending in April. Dice que la temporada de lluvia ha incrementado y la lluvia será más intensa y más larga en el futuro. Pues va a tener efectos en ag agricultura. Um, and then the dry season from June to August is going to see a reduction in precipitation by 7 to 13%. What percent? 
uh, between 7 and 13 percent by 2040. Antes del de año 2040, la temporada seca va, eh, bueno, va a bajar eh, de lluvia entre 7 y 13 por ciento. And this has already been noted among a lot of the Quechuan farmers. I was watching videos that have been made by Quechuan communities um, on a website called Conversations with Mother Earth. Um, and they've made some really amazing videos talking about uh, these, these same things, about the effects of, of the much stronger and unpredictable rainy seasons. Muchas de las personas en las comunidades quechua, en lo, las montañas, ya, ya saben de, de qué está pasando y ha notado el proceso de, de la lluvia y el cambio de las temporadas y, y cosas así. Y ya están comentando entre ellos y aparece en el, un sitio web que ya encontró que dice que ya saben ellos los que tienen como eh, chakras y cosas así en, en las montañas. Um, so, more facts. The Peruvian Ministry of the Environment in 2009 uh, came out with a report showing that 80,000 hectares um, of potatoes and 60,000 hectares of white corn had been lost in 12 crop years due to climate change. That's a loss of half of all crops. El Ministerio de Medio Ambiente, Medio Ambiente sí, aquí en, en Perú, en 2009, eh, bueno, eh, producieron un reporte que dice que, how many? Sorry. Um, uh, in the last 12 crop years? En los últimos 12 años. And how many has it lost? Uh, it's, it's about half of all crops. Ah, han perdido como... 50% de todos los, los productos de las, las chapas. Mm -hmm. 80,000 hectares de potatoes and what of corn? Um, and 60,000 hectares of corn. 60,000 hectares de, de maíz y 80,000 hectares de, de papas. Um, and this is also having effects on pets. So there's been an increase of rats. Uh, they're seeing rats at uh, new, new altitudes that they had never seen before, um, as well as other pests, and those are passing on diseases not only to the crops but also to the livestock. Eh, los ratones ya están yendo a altitudes más, más alta que antes y están teniendo efectos en los productos de la chapa. Están comiendo y tienen infecciones y cosas así. Y están pasándole a, a, a los productos, a los, a los animales. A, sí, a la comida. And so one of the direct effects of this, and one of the reasons I reached out to Alamaki, um, is that uh, since the crops are failing, people are turning to different sources of income. Men are starting to migrate to urban areas to try and find alternative sources of income. And women are taking on more uh, within the villages uh, uh, to try and support their, support their families. Porque los productos de la chacra ya están fallando un poco. Las personas que viven de esa manera tienen que buscar otra, otra manera a vivir y a encontrar ingresos para la familia para que puedan seguir, bueno, proveyendo para las, los niños y cosas. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about Awamaki's wonderful role in mitigation in just a second. Like I said, people are starting to migrate into urban areas. Um, informal growth uh, in, the, in recent years has been 80% of expansion in Cusco, in the, the city of Cusco, not the region of Cusco. Um, and most of those people who are moving to the city don't have basic services like electricity and uh, running water. So by informal, you mean just from migration from, from migration, areas, not yeah. like planned, not like growth, planned. Okay. Yeah, not planned urban development, but 
mucha gente de comunidades más rurales están mudándose a la ciudad como a Cusco para buscar otra manera de, de vivir. Sí. Y, y cuando se mudan no tienen acceso a servicios esenciales como electricidad o agua, agua limpia. Um, so I got to comb through some of the urban develop urban planning reports for Cusco City, uh, and they've been working with the World Bank on trying to figure out what the impact of climate change will be on the city. Um, the houses on the outs outskirts of Cusco City are particularly unstable. And so far, urban planning hasn't taken uh, climate refugees into account as part of urban growth. Uh, basically, they're trying to take care of what already exists and can't really see beyond uh, what they are, what what's all what's there already that they have to take care of. Oficiales en Cusco están trabajando con el Banco Mundial para planificar de la ciudad, pero no están dando cuenta de la migración de las montañas a, a Cusco, pues so, solamente están enfocándose en los problemas que ya tienen. Pues eh, en el futuro va a ser más de un problema porque tienen que darse cuenta de lo que está pasando en la montaña y que están migrando a la ciudad. Um, this is particularly troubling, um, given that a lot of the research that I've looked at as far as um, climate change mitigation has talked about how farmers are encouraging their children to go to school in Cusco or in urban areas, uh, as well as take up employment there so they can have dual residencies, um, maintain their ties to their communities, but also start to have um, housing within a, a, a safer, more, more stable environment. Mm -hmm. Tiene efectos en esas comunidades también porque los, los padres están mandando a sus hijos a la ciudad para estudiar para que en el futuro puedan tener otro, otra forma de ganar dinero. So some of the risks for the cities um, and for Oyen Taitambo, if any of you were here in 2010, um, the excess melting glaciers combined with the changing seasons, um, the harder rains, longer rains, means that there's going to be an increase in floods and landslides. Um, and I know within Cusco and within the Sacred Valley, there already averages about one per year of each of those. Um, and Cusco's wholly, wholly unprepared for uh, for an increase in flooding and, and landslides. And the people who are going to be most affected by that are the, the poorest, because they're the ones living in the most at-risk areas. Eh, está hablando de los riesgos para las ciudades y, y para Ollanta. Y dice que va, vamos a ver una incrementación de aguacero y la caída de tierra y, y barro de las montañas. Y Cusco no está preparado para eso. Y, y los que van a ver los, los efectos más graves son las personas pobres, porque están un poco afuera de la ciudad y no tienen acceso a servicios esenciales para eso. This is also going to affect the communities that are along the way to Machu Picchu, since um, a lot of people are supplementing their incomes by selling things to the throngs of tourists who are going up to Machu Picchu. So if flooding and landslides end up closing or wiping out part of the trail, which has historically already happened, um, that means that's going to wipe out the extra income for people who rely on tourists as well. Eh, las comunidades en la camina a Machu Picchu eh, tienen una dependencia en vender cosas a turistas y es posible que la caída de tierra y barro de las montañas va a cerrar la, la cami el camino. Mm -hmm. Pues si eso pase van a, van a quitar su manera de vivir también. And then it's also important to note that the city of Cusco isn't just unprepared for climate change and for an influx of, um, of immigrants. It, it's physically and economically set up to exclude its poorest residents. Uh, dice que no está preparado Cusco, pero también eh, bueno, de la manera física, pero también de eh, las 
eh, de la economía no está como situada en una manera a proveer acceso a servicios para las personas pobres y esos problemas van a incrementar en el futuro. Um, and lastly, 70% of Peru's increasing energy needs are met by hydropower, uh, which I mentioned before is supplied by the glaciers. So uh, in the future, as those glaciers recede and we don't have as much, uh, as much glacier melt to supply hydropower, um, we're just going to be without electricity. <laughs> Eh, bueno, eh, muchas personas en Perú tienen una dependencia en la energía hidroeléctrica, uh -huh. pero porque las, las glaciares están, bueno, están, están perdiendo un, uh, un poco de hielo y el agua, no vamos a tener el agua que tenemos ahorita en el futuro, pues vamos a tener que averiguar otra manera a, a proveer eh, yeah, eléctrico o agua a las comunidades, como aquí en Ollanta. Glacier Melt is going to combine, uh, uh, fairly unfortunately, with the effects of El Nino, which can be felt pretty strongly in Peru. So that means that uh, the, the climatic changes that we're already experiencing are going to be very unpredictable, um, which makes it that much harder to plan for what's going to happen. Um, and particularly the cold has been intensifying and they can't tell when we're going to have these, these arctic winds kind of blast into the communities. Um, so one year, just in one town, 50 children died from uh, the effects of frost and cold temperatures. Uh, and then also the alpacas have been dying, um, the ones that are getting born. So studies have been showing that highland communities are experiencing um, fewer alpaca births per year. Um, and the ones that are getting born are suffering from a lot of this drought and uh, the effects of El Nino. Um, so just last year, Peru's government declared a state of emergency um, for the Andean region of Puno uh, when freezing temperatures killed 250,000 alpacas. Pues, eh, por la, los cambios climáticos no vamos a poder adivinar qué va a pasar en el futuro como podemos ahorita. Pues eh, ya hemos visto como problemas con la helada y el frío en comunidades muy altas y niños están muriendo por la helada y también eh, alpacas están muriendo y también no estamos bien viendo tantos nacimientos de alpacas pues eh, ya yeah, había un estado de emergencia when was the state of emergency last year el año pasado en Perú en la región de Puno um, and then uh, <laughs> he told me to stop being so depressing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How much is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll get into the adaptation on the next slide, but uh, real quick. Um, the health centers in Peru are also seeing um, cases of leishmaniasis and dengue fever in places where it had never been seen before, um, as well as a, a much higher rate of diarrhea in children, um, uh, compounded with water poisoning from runoff from uh, mining in, in different regions. Um, they're also seeing higher rates of infections and problems during pregnancy and malnutrition. Dice que las costas están viendo las enfermedades que aparecen en la pantalla y también hay más infecciones por el, el la agua y también problemas con eh, mujeres embarazadas. So adaptation and mitigation. Um, so most of the studies that I have read so far have talked about uh, two primary forms of adaptation and mitigation. 
preserving seeds for genetic variability. Um, so that way we have a, a wider array of potatoes and corn that are able to withstand and adapt to changes in climate. Um, this is particularly important because the um, Ministry of Agriculture has been pushing GMO crops. Uh, I don't know how to you know, genetically, genetically modified organisms. Monsanto. Mm -hmm. uh, in Peru? In El Ministerio de Salud o de Agricultura están, bueno, están tratando de, de proveer más, más comida modificada de los genéticos eh, mm -hmm. para la adaptación, pero no es algo, algo bueno, porque eh, la comida no es tan orgánico como, como es ahorita. Yeah, so preserving seeds for genetic variability. Um, there have been groups advocating for women's and indigenous knowledge to be included in all national climate change adaptation plans. Um, and they already held a large people's conference about climate change in Peru, uh, as well as women's climate tribunals. Había una conferencia de los planes para adaptar al cambio climático. When, when was the conference? Like last year? I think the conference was last year. Eh, creo que el año pasado, eh, mm -hmm. la conferencia fue. Y también hay mucho más grupo trabajando con los derechos de mujeres y el conocimiento de mujeres y de, de comunidades de los problemas y de la adaptación. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, migration has been uh, a very popular uh, way of adapting to climate change. Um, also, there's a group called Pachamama Remi located in Cusco City that is working with communities to um, plant trees for CO2 sequestration. Um, and <coughs> there's also uh, a, a fairly unique uh, uh, and innovative um, <laughs> Mitigation. There's a guy going around painting the mountaintops white. Um, it's like with egg whites and lime or something that uh, will help bounce the sunlight off of the rocks instead of having having it absorbed. And so it's going to keep the temperature colder at, at higher elevations. <laughs> cool. I will try to say that. Um, <laughs> no, so, uh, migración es una forma de adaptación más popular acá. Y también hay un grupo en Cusco quien está trabajando con el secuestro de CO2. Y también dice que hay un programa interesante que está haciendo un hombre y está, está yendo y pintando las, las montañas. O, sí, sí la, la cima de las montañas están pintándoles eh, blanco con claras de huevo y yeah. también con limones para reflexionar. Sí, sí limones, lo que sea. Para reflexionar el sol para que la temperatura no se cae tanto. Um, <laughs> you got a big grant for it. Um, <laughs> the Peruvian government is sort of putting up with it, but they're like... <laughs> Recibió una subvención muy grande por ese proyecto. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, fair trade, um, which is giving women uh, a fair source of income supplementation. Y um, también programas como Aumaki, quien trabaja con mujeres para darles un ingreso más sostenible. So we were reading on your website uh, last night or the night before when I was kind of going over my slides um, and trying to figure out where you were. Uh, we noticed there's a section called Meet the Women, and in 2010, after the, the landslides, or was it landslides or floods? Floods. Floods. It's like the knitters section. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
So, yeah. so after the, the floods um, in Oyente Tambo, Awamaki was approached by a group of women to form a, a, a cooperative to help earn income to rebuild their houses. Mm. So it's another way that Awamaki is really playing into um, the mitigation uh, aspects of climate change. Mm. Eh, también Aomaki está trabajando con cooperativas de mujeres porque en 2010 había una inundación de agua y algunas casas estaban destruidas. Y trabajamos antes con las mujeres para eh, reconstruir las casas. Pues es una forma de mitigación del cambio climático. So a little more bad news is that... <laughs> One of the things that could be pushing Peru to the brink um, is that its economic boom is inextricably linked to the activities that are damaging the environment and contributing to climate change. Um, so, some numbers. The value of mining project investments expected in the next uh, decade is in the range of $40 billion to $50 billion. Um, or half of all investments in Peru in the next two years. Uh, and my government is directly implicated in that. So uh, this was part of the, I think it was 2008 trade agreement with Peru. Um, uh, one of part of the agreement was that there would be little regulation, little oversight of the mining industry, and the mining industry also has no water quotas. Mining of what? Do you know? Uh, mining of of gold, gold, gold copper. and copper or tin, gold and like minerals and stuff. Yeah, it's mainly gold. Okay. Uh, Peru is like the fifth largest exporter of gold in the world. Do you know the free trade agreements that happened around the same time with Europe and China like, was reflected with that? Oh, the free trade agreements that all happened around the same time with both Europe, China, Europe, China and the US. Mm -hmm. um, China and Europe, do you know if there were protections in those at all? I had just studied this so, uh, There were some built into the free trade agreements in Mexico. Um, yeah, the environmental and labor protections are very effective. Um, I think that there were some that were suppressive. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, okay. But as far as the Caribbean one, it actually the trade really got broken down by every single democratic senator. I didn't read a lot about the U.S. domestic politics of it. It was more like the Peruvian politics of the agreements, but mm -hmm. yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, oh, and also, uh, even though Peru has really been touting the uh, reduction in poverty since this trade agreement um, there hasn't been a reduction in um, there hasn't there haven't been improvements in education outcomes or uh, health outcomes which are usually the other indicators of um, a reduction in, in poverty hemos visto una reducción de pobreza en Perú pero no hemos visto en una incrementación de educación o los resultados de educación o salud están tan peor como antes. So on the front lines, we already have lots of organizations in Peru that are working on climate change. Um, these are just a few that I have either contacted or uh, relied on heavily for my research or that are um, part of, there's a, a large climate change coalition in Peru. Um, so they are either heading that coalition or provided me with a lot of my statistics. Um, so I also want to point out that uh, at the end of 2014, uh, Lima, Peru will be hosting the 2014 United Nations Climate Change Conference. So this is the biggest climate change conference in the entire world and it will be in Lima this year. Um, so uh, 
environmental rights activists could definitely use your help if you're around then. Um, there was a recent law passed. Uh, it's, uh, it, it happened after some protests. Uh, indigenous tribes were protesting, I think it was mining activities um, the on their Amazon. land yeah. in the Amazon. And the day that they were scheduled to leave, the uh, military and police came in and killed, I think, a couple dozen people. Um, there, there are hundreds reported missing. Hundreds reported missing. But uh, officially they're actually, only 20 to 30 dead. <laughs> uh, being, being put on trial now. Um, and the protesters, uh, are, being the, the protesters are being put on trial now. And uh, according to WikiLeaks documents, the US government is actually uh, implicated in those deaths as well. Deaths of people working in the mining industry? Uh, no, these were the indigenous people protesting. The, they, were, they were putting pressure on the, on the uh, Peruvian president uh, to, to deal with the protesters in a forceful way. And they did. They went in, in helicopters and... The U.S. was putting pressure on them? Mm -hmm. The U.S. was put... Well, yeah, the U.S. was putting pressure on on, uh, on the Peruvian... So who, who was the president? Garcia? Yes. Yeah, so they were putting president, pre uh, pressure on the president to clear the protesters to allow the mining investments to go through. So like the next two years, half of the mining investments, or half of the investments, uh, like international investments in Peru are coming from mining. You can imagine the immense amount of political pressure yeah. on the Peruvian administration to allow those investments to to move forward. And, gotcha. But they're... But they're um, they're uh, at the same time w w as they're doing that they're trampling on the rights of indigenous peoples who by law need to be consulted even though they're not being consulted about how their lands are being used so there are huge battles going on where are mining sorry well um there are the, different different the numbers, numbers are different depending on approximately depending on the reports but a couple dozen um okay. including some police officers yeah but there were thousands of protesters there so Wow. And where was that? Um, do you remember the name of the I area? Remember. I don't remember the name. It's on our blog. It's on our blog. She wrote a report on it. <laughs> <laughs> We're learning. We don't have all this stuff committed to memory. Yeah. Eh, eh, bueno, en Lima, eh, al fin de este año va a ser eh, eh, la conferencia de las Naciones Unidas de Cambio Climático. Eh, va a estar en, en Lima este año, en 2014. Eh, también uh, recién había una, bueno, había una protesta de las inversiones en minería, en la producción de oro y cosas así. Y el, el gobierno de los Estados Unidos estaba, intenta, eh, estaba intentando uh, convencer el, el gobierno peruano a parar esta esa protesta y bueno eh, la policía o las oficiales mataron a algunas unas personas aproximadamente 30 personas incluso unas policías estaban matados en ese, ese evento pues eh, bueno van a la corte para resolver ese problema pero eh, Cosa, eventos así eh, como una in, indicación que en el futuro vamos a ver más problemas eh, alrededor del tema de cambio climático y también de minería que tiene un enlace con cambio climático. You, you have a very good memory. Um, so the reason I bring that up is recently there was a law passed in response to those protests that gives soldiers and police amnesty um, from prosecution if they injure or kill someone while on duty. So obviously that has vast implications for indigenous populations who are trying to uh, uh, protest the encroachment of mining on their territory. Había una ley que dice que la policía tiene amnestía a cosas eh, así, eh, como 
de la, cuando matan a alguien, quien está protestando, pues tiene implicaciones en cómo se trata las, las comunidades eh, de las montañas, las comunidades rurales, quienes están protestando. Y también había una ley que dice que tienen, el gobierno tiene que consultar con esas comunidades acerca de la minería en las montañas, pero el gobierno está haciéndolo, pues hay, sí, es una indicación de mucho más problema. Mm -hmm. um, so, the group Frontline Defenders uh, came out with a pretty detailed report um, just last month called Environmental Rights Defenders at Risk in Peru, um, showing that human rights defenders and environmental activists are already facing frivolous lawsuits, intimidation, harassment, violence, um, and now mining companies can call the police or the army to, army to act as private security um, to prevent, detect, or neutralize threats. Sí, hay una ley nueva que dice que las compañías de minería pueden llamar a la policía o, o el ejército para que vengan y proteger de personas que están protestando. Pues hay implicaciones muy graves. So when a peaceful protester is neutralized, they have no legal protections currently under this law. Ah, pues cuando la policía o el ejército viene, no hay protecciones para los las personas protestando. Mm -hmm. And so the more people they can have in Lima for these conferences, um, bring attention, bringing attention to these issues, um, to the violence, to the laws, to the you know environmental degradation, um, the impacts of climate change, and the implications of uh, foreign investors, uh, the the more likely it's to be it's going to be a safe um, environment. Ah. So. Esperan que muchas más personas vengan a Lima para conferencias como la de las Naciones Unidas para atraer más atención a los problemas para que en el futuro no haya tantas sí, muertos o bueno. So what we want to do is have a discussion. I was kind of wondering if any of this information was new to you, if you knew it all already, um, as well as get some feedback as far as what you feel like are um, some of the, the, the threats of climate change that you're already seeing here, um, ways in which you see your work um, sort of interacting with uh, the progression of climate change in Peru. Um, I included a picture, that's my dog, Gumbo. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's been featured in every single uh, presentation I've done so far in grad school in the last three years. Mm -hmm. And this is my final presentation of grad school, I think. <laughs> so, so Gumbo has made a, the vast sacrifice of being put in doggy daycare for two and a half months while we're here. Aww. So thank you, Gumbo. And <laughs> thank you, everyone, for for being here. <laughs> Quiero saber si esa información es nueva para nosotros o ya la sabíamos antes. Y también oh, quiere okay. saber cómo cómo va a afectar <laughs> nuestros trabajos esa información o si el cambio climático va a tener un efecto en en las organizaciones en que estamos trabajando o en las comunidades donde trabajamos. So just to make sense of what's here too, uh, we're both writers and, and we've come down and, and decided to sort of blog, you know, blog about what we're learning as we're here and the people we're talking to. And of course, the more we, we uh, learn, the more we realize we're completely ignorant. Uh, and, and we'd like um, people who live in Peru, whether you're expats or Peruvians, uh, to contribute perspectives uh, if you will, you know, if you if you if you're willing to send us um, things that we can post as guest posts on our blog, uh, that that will inform the perspective we're trying to communicate to the people who are reading it. We have a lot of people who um, are very well co connected in the environmentalist movement. Um, back in Seattle, uh, we have a woman. Uh, a friend of ours named Emily, who's close friends with Bill McKibben and runs 350.org Seattle. 
uh, who's going to write. We have a lot, just a lot of folks who really want to hear what you guys have to say. And this is going to be our strategy over the next couple of months while we're in the country to have people, you know, contribute to our blog. So if, if you would just go have a look at it and see if there's something you'd want to add, we're happy to do that. Mm -hmm. Cool. And it's nice because we can collect information in people's own languages and we know people who speak Spanish much better than I do uh, who can help us um, and sort of interpret too so we can yeah you don't have to send English <laughs> <laughs> the original post as well as interpreted translated I mean. and I'm especially interested in the intersections of climate change and free trade agreement so <laughs> If you were interested in that, you're welcome, right? Yeah, well. Si tenemos ganas de contribuir a su blog, les gustaría si mandamos un como algún ensayo para que puedan incluir nuestra perspectiva en el blog. Y dice que también puede ser en español porque tienen amigos quien puede traducirlo. Yo quisiera hacerle una pregunta a la señorita. Este, está hablando sobre el cambio climatológico, ¿no es cierto? Y se ha estado viendo cifras porcentajes, ¿no? Uh, ese cambio climatológico, ¿no? Ah, sí, ok. No sé, está explicando sobre el cambio climatológico, ¿ya? Y hay cifras que están en diferentes, por ejemplo, en el Perú, en Lima, ¿sí? Hay cambios, porcentajes uh, mayores y menores uh -huh. uh, que, que está acá, ¿no? Entonces yo quisiera saber si acá en la sierra, parte sierra, ¿no? Uh -huh. uh, hay ese cambio climatológico, ¿en cuánto por ciento puede afectar en mujeres gestantes? Uh -huh. Did you get that? Some. Yeah, so pretty much she wants to know like what kind of what the percent is like or what the effect is here in like the, the forest region, kind of where we are on like women's communities and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, so she, she was just saying that like you were talking about how there's a difference in like the cities versus like in the mountains and stuff like that. And so she wants... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And especially on, and you talked about pregnant women. And so mm -hmm. she wants to know like what kind of effects specifically in this the forest region um, climate change can have on, on pregnant women especially in the communities, like up in, up in the mountains. Yeah. So a lot of that is going to depend on um, water rights. So um, who gets access to what water is remaining? Um, there's definitely going to be a gendered impact of climate change. Women are going to feel it the most um, because uh, they're taking care of the children, um, because they're the ones getting left behind in the communities to take care of the farm while the men go migrate to find work. Um, they're already finding increases in um, malnutrition, mental illness, and domestic violence in some of the highland communities um, because of the, the stresses of the loss of crops and the needs to migrate. Um, so yeah, and that's that's definitely impacts that are being felt in in this this region. Eh, depende mucho en como los derechos y el acceso a la agua. Y dice que las mujeres van a sentir el impacto mucho más que los hombres, porque las mujeres la mayoría de la, del tiempo tienen que quedarse en las comunidades y cuidar a los niños y también a las chacras cuando los hombres están yendo a, a Cusco, están buscando otros trabajos, pues tienen que quedarse donde los, los efectos son más, mucho más fuertes, pues dice que las mujeres embarazadas eh, van a sentir el efecto mucho, mucho más que los hombres. Y, sí, y depende mucho en, en la agua, porque tienen que compartir la agua en la comunidad y, Eh, sí, eh, muchas veces eh, las, los hombres como tienen más, más derechos, como eh, no por la ley, pero por el hecho de vivir. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah, so like I said, um, domestic violence rates are going up and um, malnutrition rates, uh, particularly in children and women. Um, la violencia doméstica está incrementando y mm -hmm. la nutrición está peorando, mm -hmm. especialmente en niños y mujeres. Mm -hmm. Más que todo. Um, but I know that the mining companies are, I think, slowly going down the mountains. And, uh, from what I've read, um, they're starting to seek out lower and lower ground, and I think it's kind of dependent on water resources. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the. Um, the president uh, recently said that Quechuan communities don't count as indigenous, and so uh, they no longer have to talk to um, Quechuan communities before using their land. They have no rights of, um, what's, what's it called? The right of consultation, pre consultation previous cons prior consultation. Ahorita el presidente dice que las comunidades quechua no están comunidades indígenas, entonces um, las compañías de mining de minería no necesitan hablar con las comunidades quechua antes de usar la tierra sí. de las comunidades. So that's another way that it's affecting just this this local region. Just until you're moving down. No, you can say that. Ah, también la compañía de la está bajando de la montaña buscando más agua, más recursos, porque están perdiendo agua en las alturas de las montañas, pues están moviéndose más más bajo. Pues van a, vamos a ver más efectos en las comunidades no tan altas como antes, pero ahorita también en las comunidades como en medio de la monta montaña. And do you know, um, are they able to mine in this area, or it's, how much of this area is protected by like, um, as like a park for Machu Picchu? Do you have any idea? I would imagine the tourist industry industry is pretty big here. They're not gonna mess with the with the tourist industry too much i don't think that mining is um, a big is a big uh, economic force in the sacred valley i think I that's think. more of the uh, madre de dios area where that's happening and if you see the photos of the amazon it looks like you know a divine creature reached down just ripped huge swaths of, of the amazon out of the, uh, it's it's very sad but um there's been a there, there's actually been a pretty big crackdown on on mining, on illegal mining. There's legal mining and then there's illegal mining. One of the problems is that the government hasn't been enforcing, uh, wasn't enforcing uh, uh, penalties for illegal mining or preventing illegal mining. So um, that's something that they've been doing last year and uh, actually gold production has gone down precipitously in the last year, according to Indus. I was just reading an industry report yesterday. And I think gold production has gone down 25% in the last year, which is huge yeah. considering that Peru is the fifth largest producer of gold in the, in the world. Isn't that actually pretty common that they're just now starting to crack down on illegal mining a little bit across gold mining countries? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's right. And it's, it's if you're insinuating that it's kind of like a cosmetic or political no. No, no, no. I, I wasn't. Oh, okay. I wasn't. There were no insinuations. Okay. <laughs> I think on the part of the Peruvian government, though, there's the, the emphasis is definitely more is placed more on economic growth. That's the well, number yeah. one. That's the number one thing, and that's the problem. Is that? Dice que el gobierno está enfocando más en el crecimiento económico, más de el cambio climático. Pues eh, también, pero a la vez eh, dice que hemos visto una bajada de producción de oro como 25% en el último año. Pues eso tiene efecto bueno en el cambio climático porque como, como dije, 
dijo, veía, hay un enlace entre la minería y el cambio climático. I think the, the biggest impacts in this region are going to be the flooding, landslides, um, the impacts on tourism, um, you know, closing down the routes to Machu Picchu, um, and water access. I mean, water access is really, it's the big it's, it's the biggest the, issue the big in the country, because mm -hmm. you may not see it now, but in 100 years, I mean, how are you going to get water to Lima? <laughs> Los, los efectos más, más grandes en esta región va a ser el acceso a agua y los impactos en la industria de, de turist, turistas. Um, what else is in the tourist industry? Um, the, you know, the effects on agriculture um, and then landslides, ah, landslides and flooding. Agricultura y la caída de, de tierra y barro de las montañas y las inundaciones de agua. Mm -hmm. van a ser los, los efectos más graves aquí en Ollanta y, y Cusco. Mm -hmm. o sea, quiere decir de que si va a pasar eso no van a venir turistas. Sí, exacto, porque van a tener que cerrar el camino hasta Machu Picchu y si no hay, si no hay un Machu Picchu para visitar los turistas no van a venir. No van a venir. Pues, pues vamos a ver cómo el opuesto de un crecimiento de económico, pues el gobierno tiene que, tiene que enfocarse en, en, en cambio, el cambio climático. Sí, poco interés ahí del gobierno peruano para ese tipo de, sí. de esa importancia que se debe dar, ¿no? Mm -hmm. yeah. She said that there's just, like, there's very little focus from the government or they don't pay as much attention to this as they should, considering the effects that it can have. Yeah, yeah, especially the water. The water Pero si se puede evitar esas minerías, de repente a un 90% puede cambiar, se puede evitar ese cambio tan brusco climatológico, ¿no? She's asking me if, like, if we saw a big reduction in mining, like, that could, like, that could prevent a lot of the... Uh, climate change in the area? Mm. Um, well, I know... Uh, it wouldn't prevent climate change. It would prevent some of the dire effects of... Uh, like the poisoning of the water systems. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of it is just the water rights um, uh, aren't spread very equally right now. Um, and mining is contributing to poisoning what water systems exist. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also contributing to deforestation. And so planting trees has been um, really important to uh, sort of reverse um, the, the CO2 output. Dice que si hay una bajada en la minería, no va a evitar el cambio climático, pero puede evitar los efectos como el veneno del agua y como el derecho a agua en las comunidades que hay. Yeah, you were talking about how, how climate change has an effect on tourism, or will have an effect on tourism, but have you looked at how tourism affects Climate change? Yeah. Oh, sure. I'm sure it does. Yeah. Um, Specifically CO2 emissions from... From the airplanes and stuff. Yeah. I mean, uh, climate change is primarily occurring because of developed rich nations. Uh, you know, the U.S. is probably one of the largest contributors to climate change um, and is also host to the largest population of deniers of climate change and so really a lot of this is uh, incumbent upon uh, us putting pressure uh, on our own government um, but there are also you know impacts that can be uh, taken care of within Peru as well. Los países desarrollados están contribuyendo más que países al cambio climático. Pues en países como los de nosotros, eh, tenemos la responsabilidad a trabajar a evitar los efectos del cambio climático.
porque ya estamos, eh, tenemos más responsabilidad porque hemos contribuido más de, más de otro país como Perú. Pues lo que está haciendo los Estados Unidos tiene efectos aquí en Perú, porque el, el cambio climático es global. Mm -hmm. Lo que hace un país tiene efecto en otro. Yeah. Y están evitando. Sí. Están evitando un cambio climatológico. Sí. Y para evitar eso están trabajando. Sí, y dice que tenemos que trabajar, pero el gobierno de los Estados Unidos no está haciendo lo que hace, lo que debe hacer. Pues en bueno, en el tema de la poli, la política, sí. Bueno, eh, la política del gobierno no es tan fuerte como debe ser. So I know it's been over an hour now, and I don't want to keep you guys all night. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's anything else you feel like we should know, um, uh, both for our blog and for my project, and like I said, there's like no focus at the University of Washington on climate climate change, which is weird because it's, you know, in one of the most progressive... You mean in like, social work? In social work. Well, yeah. even in the Department of Global Health, there was... Mm. We had one class on climate change, and it was the one I set up. <laughs> so... Yeah, it, actually, um, it's really strange because uh, Seattle is, is, like, basically one of the, you know key uh, places for dialogue about global health. I mean, largest global health organizations in the world, many of them are based in Seattle. I used to work for the Gates Foundation, and they had a very good vision of how development and health were related, but they don't, at least when I was there uh, about four years ago I left, um, there was no they were not bringing global warming into the picture at all, and it's it's the white elephant in the room. Or go translate that. <laughs> Something about a white elephant. Muchas muchas de las organizaciones que no están trabajando para evitar el cambio climático están ubicadas en Washington, donde viven ellos. Y él dice que antes él tra trabajaba con la fundación de, de Bill Gates. Él, ¿Conoce quién es? ¿Sabe quién es Bill Gates? El hombre muy rico en los Estados Unidos. Él tiene mucho dinero. Pero, bueno, y dice que no están trabajando directamente en la, la evitación global, global de cambio climático. Es como algo que todos saben que deben, deben hacer, pero nadie está haciendo como deben. Nadie está poniendo en práctica. Exacto. O como poco a poco, pero no en como plazo largo, no en como... Uh -huh. sí, está una... proyectado para un plazo largo, sí. no para corto. ¿no? Sí, pero nadie está trabajando para evitarlo en un plazo largo. Solo, hay, solo están hablando de hacerlo. So was this information new to you, or was it, some, I mean... Sort of a, was it a review of things that you kind of already knew? Is that information new, or is it like a repaso for us to know? Can I specifically it's all for you, especially, I didn't know like all of that, so it's really interesting. I mean, it's kind of, you know, scary. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty overwhelming to read about every night. Mm -hmm. We've been pretty depressed the last few weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Drink a lot of Pisco. Yeah. We're spreading it. I have been drinking a lot of Pisco. <laughs> <laughs> We're spreading it around a little bit. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But I had just been looking into some, I've been trying to figure out, you know, what are the top health problems in this region and some of the ones that you mentioned are now emerging mm -hmm. more in Peru. Or so, I had like just found data on leishmaniasis, yeah, which one. is a really nasty. Yeah, yeah and that it actually, um, it, was, it, it does occur in this region um, from time to time. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it will start what happening. Is it? It's, um, it's, it's a, from a, a deer, yeah. is it 
deer flies or something. It's a bacteria and it is looking at all these nasty pictures of the so what like, did it do? Yeah, it's like an infection that oh, okay. It can end up like sort of leaving gaping holes in your body. Oh, lovely. It's, yeah, not something you want. <laughs> No. And how do you get it? Or where do you get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to go like foreign <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I mean, for me, a lot of the a lot of the specifics were definitely new. Um, mm -hmm. Last summer, I interned at the Organization of American States in DC, mm -hmm. and I worked in the sustainable development part department. But mm -hmm. just across the hall was the climate change department, and mm -hmm. so I hang out with those guys a lot. And I got to talk to a bunch of experts, um, especially I talked, I spent hours in one guy's office, um, uh, an expert from Argentina. So it was very much like a similar kind of region or or yeah. locale. Um, yeah. So yeah, a lot of the a lot of the overall stuff isn't isn't specifically new, it's more like a review with a lot of the individual effects or specific effects here yeah. in this region or everybody yeah. else. Yeah. And they drink a lot. <laughs> so so your, your climate friends, your climate scientists, <laughs> scientist friends. <laughs> he, was, he was kind of a depressing guy overall. Everything was going to hell. <laughs> yeah, sorry but about He was that. brilliant though. I mean, yeah. I, I loved talking to him. Yeah. Okay.